Okay, so I have the herd installed in a virtual machine, but I'm having some issues with it. It's halting right now. One of the issues that you'll see here in just a second, every time I try to halt it, I get this in a tight loop and control delete doesn't seem to do anything. You're not supposed to reboot and I have to manually close the darn thing. That doesn't seem good. Um, here's the program that whenever I type in herd, this is what it's doing. This is the call to QEMU. QEMU is a kernelized virtual machine. So I'm running Linux right now. When I press herd, it's booting up the herd and it's running inside a virtual machine. Um, I am passing it the curses command line or curses option and that just uh, lets me keep the Dvorak keyboard layout. If you're using QWERTY then don't pass curses. If you don't know what QWERTY or Dvorak is do not pass curses. You won't need it. Anyway, so it's booting right now. Um, this is the general I guess this is how the herd looks like. Um, logging in. And when I do the first command here, you get this file system not mounting issues. So I, I just think this uh, virtual machine has probably been corrupted in, at the file system level. And I don't know that it's easily fixable. So I'm just going to um, start from scratch. I'm going to try to show y'all how you can um, create a virtual machine and throw it, start hopefully hacking on the herd. I think that would be pretty cool. Um, all right, so here's where I keep my virtual machine images. I'm going to go ahead and remove Debian stuff. Cool. So those are the old uh, herd images. One of these is like uh, the kernel and all that wound up, and one of them is just the hard drive. Or maybe they both are. I don't know at this point. Anyway, I'm going to go to look up the herd. And there we go. Can you herd? Try to figure out how to install um, the herd in a virtual machine. Here we go. Here's what you're supposed to do. I believe that the maintainer of the herd, this guy here, he updates it like once a month or so. So what I'm getting right now should be the latest one. That's going to go ahead and download this image. So, fairly straightforward. <clears throat> Just in case you're wondering, the root password is empty. Yeah, we're gonna need that later. Okay, I'll check out the readme file. Let's see what this says. Pre-installed images is available here. If you run directly this way, it can be convenient to connect through SSH through the box. I'm definitely gonna be doing that. You run in VirtualBox, much less tested. Testing the installer on real hardware. I'm not gonna do that. You can run the herd on real hardware. Some people do it, most people don't, but you certainly can try. Okay, it's been downloaded. So Debian herd image tar.gz. Okay, next command. Nope, there we go. Copy that. That is taking this file, this is like a compressed file and this command is uncompressing it. Um, I believe the maintainer of the herd, Samuel Tilbolt, I think is his name, he has packaged the herd to um, run on a, on a hard drive that is like a gigabyte in size or so. You could install the herd inside a virtual machine and I've tried to do that before, but
but it's just not worth it. It's it's so much easier just to use his uh, virtual machine where the herd's already installed. And I want to take a quick dive into what this is. Um, so I guess this right here, this HD one, I'm creating an extra hard drive for the herd to use, I guess, so I can have more stuff in it, which let's see here, HD one, uh, HD zero. Yeah. I, I really don't know. I might not even have that on this one because it looks like it's going to be much easier if I just don't have that. So remove tar.gz. Um, oh, move. I said remove tar.gz. Okay. Move Debian herd image to Debian herd 2017. Never mind, 2017.06, so we, never mind. It's actually saying 2017.06.13. So I guess that's a little bit dated, but that's okay. I will change that. Debian heard 2017.06.13.image. Dang it. Sometimes I'm a bit goofy. Debian heard 2017.06.13. That image. That's a little cleaner. Now, okay, um, for the moment I'm gonna get rid of that. Definitely gonna get rid of that. Okay. Um, you want this no reboot. I think it says it in the here somewhere. Uh, somewhere it says that. Um, you're, I believe you're not supposed to reboot on the herd, so that to avoid file subs file system corruption. So allegedly that's the, that's the deal. Anyway, that's the old herd. Here's the new herd file is going to be Debian herd 2017.06.13 image. Okay, and we're gonna try to run that. See what happens. Booting from the hard disk. Going into graphic mode. Ah, it seems to be working. That's cool. Uh, I think, I don't know if this one says it. That was from, okay, so I was using an image from 2016. Now I'm using an image that's like a, a year updated, so. I'm kind of excited. Um, they've done some cool stuff with it um, in about a year or so. So it should be fun to work with. It's going to download this stuff. I need to log in as root. The first time we do this, if I tried to log in as my normal user, it's, it's like, what? Um, I mean, my normal user has no password associated with it. That user is not created. So you have to do it. You have to log in as root at first. So login is root, password's empty, sweet. Um, now I gotta remember how to add a user. Is it just add user? It might just be this simple. Okay, so add user Joshua. Enter this password. I'm gonna make it an incredibly easy password. Uh, my full name. My room number, don't really have one of those. I'm not gonna add that in. I'm not gonna add that in. Other, I am a cool person. Yes. Okay, so now I've created a, a user, Joshua. So I'm logging out. Okay, now I can log back in. I'm logged in as user Joshua. How cool is that? So the herd's not Linux. Make sure you read this thing, herd install. Check out the fact, latest version here. Turns into primer. Okay, so that's how you get started uh, very briefly on the herd. Um, 
I think there's a bit more stuff I can show you real quick. And that is how to get some of the source code. There's like, so we're gonna keep that there. Getting the herd, running the herd, starting a herd in a QEM image. Maybe it's herd somewhere else. Understanding, contributing, see contributing. Okay, this is what confuses me. So you have running the herd right here, very simple. And then you have a contributing thing. I mean, it's the same directions to get started, but I don't know, it, it, it seems to me like you're having information in two places. Maybe they should just have like Debbie and Herd here and then say um, contribute. I don't know. It just seems odd to have that information twice. Oh, wait, here we go. Yeah, for shutting down, use reboot. Uh, then press C and grub to avoid file system issues. Or adding the no reboot to the QMU command line should help too. So that's what I have right here. I have this no reboot. So that will avoid something file system corruption. Cool. Now, um, okay, so we've downloaded everything. We're gonna do all this good stuff to app get update. Paste. Oh, duh. Pseudo app get update. Josh was not in the pseudo risk file. Oh gosh, I gotta do this all over again. Okay, um, <laughs> let me go to the arch wiki here real quick. If you've never heard of Arch Linux, you should check it out. They are not a FSF, the Free Software Foundation endorsed distribution, but they have an amazing wiki. And I wish, if you really want a better distribution, perhaps you should check out Parabola, which is kind of based on Arch. Anyway, both of them have the nice idea of uh, keep it simple, stupid. Pseudo. Installation, configuration, using vsudo, editor, nano, okay. Here we go. Um, logging out. I guess I have to log in as root to do this. So logging in as root, cool. I want to export editor equals nano, and I want to run vsudo. Okay, let's see here. User specification. I can add, okay, I'm just doing the same thing here. So Joshua, wait, I don't think that's right. I uh, probably don't want to do that one. Group sudo to execute any command. Example entries. To allow a user to gain full privileges when he or she proceeds to command with sudo at the following line. I think I want this, username all. This allows a user to gain full privileges when he or she runs a command with sudo. That's what I'll do. So, so Joshua can execute all commands when he runs sudo. Save the modified buffer, yes. Okay, log out. Joshua's logging in again. Now, sudo app get update. Perfect. So now I'm gonna update um, Debian, or Debian GNU herd. And it might be a little bit out of date, so that may take a while. So, to recap, 
I've shown y'all how to um, get your QEMU system running. Hopefully in a little bit, I will show you how to install Emacs and other goodies um, and uh, do some cool stuff with the herd. Um, there's one thing I will mention though. So you definitely want this, how does that do that? Cute, yeah, where did I, uh, was it here? I think you wanna read, I think it was the readme. So you definitely wanna do this. Whatever host, not user, net nick. I think it's this maybe? This is how you do the SSH. Um, and the reason that's helpful is, um, okay, everything's been updated. I personally have a lot of configuration in my Emacs and I don't like the idea of having to like, I don't know, running Emacs inside the herd, in my opinion, is a little bit slower. So what I do instead is I just SSH into it. Um, oh, bummer. Relocate her programming. Well, um, how do you, somehow I have to get it set up again, it looks like. Pseudo, let's just try this. SSH. Uh, how do you do it? Uh, jump to bookmark, herd programming. So it's SSH J Branso at localhost. Pound. Oh, that may be why. SSH J Branso at localhost. Pound. Two, 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 two. SSH. J Branso at local host pound two 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 two. Long type argument string p. Uh, maybe it's. Oh gosh. Um. I gotta look up how to how to use tramp. Um. Tramp is Emacs's system to view remote file systems, or to, to view remote files. Um, and I gotta look up the syntax. I might have that here, actually. Cheat sheets, emacs.org. Tramp. Okay, here we go. So method. Method is SSH. User is Joshua. Host is local host. Pound two 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 two. Colon file name. Let's see if that works. That does not work. Please correct host key known host to get rid of this message. Let's see here. Remote host identification. Oh. This is the fingerprint, this key. Add correct host key in this known host. Oh gosh. No. So I have to somehow go into known host. Diocese age. Known hosts. Uh, I forget how I how the heck did I even set this up? It's been a while. Uh, let me just try it this way. SSH Joshua at local host. Port two two two. Here's the fingerprint. Uh, 
how do you add the correct key? Here's the local host. That's the key, somehow. Somehow I need to add this. I could just try deleting it and see what happens. I'm gonna try deleting it and see what happens. Okay. Yes, I do want to continue. Haha, that fixed it. How cool is that? So now I should be able to, um, to SSH into this. Cool. I have nothing here, which is a bummer. But now I should be able to SSH into this. SSH, uh, my method, my username is Joshua at host local host pound two 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 wrong type argument file name now it maybe will work aha uh -huh. cool so now I'm there uh, I'm just gonna do this it should open it up in dired I'm gonna bash history okay that's fine um, let's create a file. Actually, programming. Um, simple file um, now well heck that's probably easier to do let's just do it this way connecting again now okay I will install git because we're gonna need git I'll probably install Emacs because we'll probably need that too. Huh. Okay, let's just install Git and see if I can work on that one first. Okay, install and Git. Cool. Um, this is like for building the Haran Gamak, I guess. I'll build the dependencies. So you don't need to build the dependencies. That's kind of nice. <clears throat> so building the dependencies. Forget. Cool. Now. If you want to take a look at the herd and browse through its source code. Okay, paste. This is going to clone into the herd. Um, while that's working on it, for those of you who are interested, the herd is a bunch of user space processes that lets someone get into kernel hacking. Generally, the kernel is a bunch of code running inside kernel space, like the Linux, which is like 13 million lines of code. Uh, the her is a set of user space processes that run on top of the mic, uh, mock, mock microkernel. Now we're going to clone a mock because we're that cool. LS. So now we have the herd sources. Very cool. Now we're going to clone GNU mock. Also very cool. Um, incubator is probably what you want. What's confusing for me is I can never clone this for some reason. And I don't know why. Let's 
for I'll get that back to that in a second. If you want to work on the web pages, if you want to work on this stuff, you can clone this stuff. And it looks like, I mean, they they're up to date. I mean, they still change stuff all the time. So that's kind of cool. Describe how to use existing images for subherds. Download this image directly and boot it. Fast boot. Once booted, you can do this. Halt from now on, boot should suffice. With install turn system. System install that was one. So this is a, how to create a file system. Using the bootstrap. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. Anyway, um, we're gonna go ahead and download this stuff because that's cool. Every now and then it's kind of nice to do that stuff. I'll get to them, but they don't work. Um, never mind. We're going to try to download this then. Get that Savannah. How did this one, all the other ones, get clone, get the SVG? I don't know if this will work. It probably won't. Okay, it's not finding the repository. Get more from the repo list. Okay, well, how do I do that? Summary log tree. How do I download this thing? Now, oh, here we go. Here's how you clone it. And this is. So hacking on the herd glibc is allegedly a great way to get started if you're not a competent developer. And they're not a competent developer like me. However, I've never been able to clone the glibc for some reason. I mean, I'm guessing it's just super massive, but it always seems to fail for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this get downloaded and installed. Um, if you're using Emacs or whatever editor, you probably want to take a look at the herd sources through Emacs. I would recommend that's probably the better way to do it. Um, it's, it's much easier to just to SSH and the herd and, and go through the files rather, in my opinion, rather than um, trying to use Emacs through this. It's just, eh, eh. And I'm probably a little biased because I have that dash dash curses command line. Anyway, um, <clears throat> I hope you have a better understanding of how to uh, run a herd inside a virtual machine. Best of luck. Still running. Save.